Good morning. I think we'll go ahead and start. Right? People can join in as they come in. Uh, my name is Sundar, Sundar Bala Subramanian. I come from the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. So this morning I had a great pleasure of meeting with Kathy. And it was a wonderful class, very useful movement, how you can move the wrists and flick, increase your flexibility, core strength and whatnot. It's a, it's a great way to incorporate some of the um, yoga methods into our life. We heard this morning how mind, body and spirit is very, very important in going through some of the uh, exercise, uh, some of the experiences, right? So what we are going to do is um, some of the breathing exercises. I am particularly studying or researching on um, radiation oncology like how we use uh, radiation for treating cancer patients. That is my one area of research, especially we are all different uh, genetically. So how we can use the genetic information to treat people with cancer differently. That is one research that I'm doing. The other part of research I'm doing is yoga breathing. Why I am interested in yoga breathing is, bless you, uh, it is, not, every, not all the time we will be able to do poses, right? We are sometimes limited by our ability to do the movements. So that's why the yoga discipline has breath work in it. So we know that the breathing uh, can be regulated. So we can control the breathing that can control the mind as well as the body. Specifically, what my research has found out is that when we do the breathing exercises, our relaxation system or the parasympathetic nervous system is nicely activated. When we are engaging our diaphragm in those breathing techniques. So that activation of the diaphragm also stimulates salivation. It is a very nice link there. So we, we go through um, dry mouth during stressful conditions. So that, that is, uh, in, in a way, that it re reduces the quality of life. The quality of life with the dry mouth is way, way low. What we found in our research is that it improves salivation, not only the stimulation of saliva, the components in the saliva we found we tested the saliva after the yoga breathing exercises, tested in the lab, what are all the things that is produced. We found nerve growth factor, which is one of the things that is needed for the proper functioning of our nervous system. So it is produced in the saliva and it gets transported to the brain and other neurons within the body. It is very, very important. What other factors we found out were where immune response molecules, like for example, that can fight against diseases, that can neutralize viruses, and, or bacteria, it can bind to bacteria, or oral mucosa, or our nasal pathway is constantly exposed to all the germs. So these proteins can bind and remove those germs. And we also, uh, we heard about stress right, has management of stress. So th stress is also mediated by some of the proteins, like the inflammatory proteins. Those inflammatory proteins are also reduced with these breathing exercises. That is one of the reasons that I, I use these methods for various people. Like um, starting, I started first started talking about that in the scleroderma chapter in South Carolina. So where we, we um, learned these techniques, we started working with uh, these patients with, um, with various breathing exercises and some chair yoga too. So now I'm using these methods for various group of patients, including cancer patients, scleroderma, or even stroke patients, and um, COPD, like uh, the um, 
patients with uh, lung uh, issues. So this, these practices are really, really useful. And I have the little information cheat sheet that you can use for um, any amount of time you want. There is no overdose for any of these breathing exercises. The only guiding principle would be how much you're comfortable in doing these exercises. That is the only limitation. If you have five minutes, you can do it. If you have one hour, you can do it for one hour. So the, these exercises are very, very, um, I mean, tested in multiple um, areas, uh, nicely tolerable. There is no uh, contraindication for these. The only thing is that if you're not feeling um, all right when you're doing this exercise, you're probably overexerting. Uh, so you want to slow down a little bit, that's, that's the only thing. Or if you're not feeling comfortable, just calm down and take normal breathing and then carry on with the exercises, right? So these breathing regulation uh, techniques, right? There are over 100 different ways you can practice these. I just chose only four of them. They are very slow and relaxing. It is very, when we talk about relaxation, it is not going to make us, make us lethargic. It is not going to make us like put to sleep. Right? It is going to increase, reduce the, all the background noise and then increase the focus. It has several benefits as you practice and practice more, you will know them all, right? Any questions so far? with the introduction, right? Can we go to the exercises now? Can everyone see me? I'm, I'm super tall, so, <laughs> so if you can, if you don't, um, you're not able to see me, you can just move around a little bit, so, or if you want to come closer, that is fine too. So, um, all these exercises you can do um, in a very comfortable sitting position. You don't have to put a cross leg or sit, um, uh, or you can sometimes lie down for some of these exercises, I will, I'll tell you, right? The first one is just to watch the breathing, right? The breathing, the moment we start wa watching the breathing, it slows down. We breathe about 15 times in one minute. That's a lot of breathing. It's a lot of stress to the system. When you look at the breathing, it calms down, just like, like the little kids, right? It calms down. And that calming down is a very good one for relaxation. Imagine that your breathing comes in from one spot, maybe at the tip of the nostril, or your forehead, or the throat, chest. Just bring your awareness to that one spot. Slowly breathe in from that spot. As you breathe out, breathe out into the same spot. There is no specific exercise to breathing yet. Just breathe normally and watch it. Now you may notice that the breathing is slowing down a little bit, which is good. Allow that to slow down. Now slowly breathe out to tuck the tummy in nicely. Tuck the tummy in and breathe in to fill the tummy area. And then keep on filling in, moving upwards, lower ribs and upper chest. And slowly release the upper chest as much as possible. And then release the lower ribs and release the tummy. Nice, slow, deep breathing, engaging all the parts, the tummy, the lower ribs, and the upper chest. Let the mind follow the breathing, inch by inch, moment by moment.
This is a great way to activate the diaphragm. When the mind moves away, don't condemn it. Just bring it gently into the breathing process. When you think you are completely full, breathe in a little more up to the collarbone so you will find a little space upwards. And in the same way, as you breathe out, tuck the tummy in a little more as much as you are comfortable. You can empty out a little more. This slow, deep breathing is a stress killer. It has a lot of healing potential. Every hour, couple of minutes of this deep breathing will have a lot of benefits. Now we are going to add some sound vibration to this breathing. We are going to continue breathing in in the same way, but Exhalation or the breathing out is going to be one long humming sound. The humming sound is a good vibration for the pituitary gland and your thyroid glands. It is a good vibration. So continue with the same slow breathing, filling the tummy, filling the rib cages, and up to the collarbone and exhale as a humming. Mm -hmm. Empty out completely and then start with the next inhalation.
after this humming come to normal breathing. Watch the breathing. You can open your eyes. So this um, exercise is very re soothing, relaxing, and it also can stimulate salivation, more salivation. The reason is that we are, we are using some very powerful relaxation here. So the vibrations of the pituitary is like uh, children when they are sick. Mm, that's a natural healing response that we are stimulating. This is going to do the exact same thing. So this is a great way. And the number of times that you probably noticed that we did not breathe 15 times in that minute, right? We probably did some five breaths in a minute or maybe under 10 breaths a minute, which is really good stress reducer. So the number of times that we are able to reduce the breathing, it has very good effect on your cardiac function, effects on your lung function. So it is a great way, right? Any questions so far with that exercise? So we did watching the breathing, we did the deep breathing, and we combined that deep breathing with humming, right? The humming, you can practice any time, like during the walk, during your work schedule. So any time during the day, you can incorporate humming with your regular work. So it has a very good effect on the breathing regulation. It's very easy to practice. It's not, it's, nobody will notice that we are practicing any yogic breathing exercises. It's very calming, right? The next exercise is going to be alternate nostril breathing exercise. It is there in the paper. So the alternate nostril breathing is one of the very common or key exercise in the yoga breathing literature. So we have two nostrils, one is the, the left and right. We don't use both nostrils at the same time. They are not open all the time. One is a little bit more open than the other one. So after some time, this one opens, this one closes a little bit. It may be like 70, 30, something like that. It is, it is not always open, right? So why is that? Because the, each nostril is controlling a different set of functions within the body. One is called the cooling or the kind of relaxing side, the left, or we call it as moon. The right is the warming side or the sun, which is kind of activating. So that is the sympathetic response. And here is the left is the parasympathetic response. So you have both relaxation and kind of little activation, stress response going simultaneously are uh, going like a thermostat so they have to be balanced what this exercise does is balancing both the systems we do really need some stress to you know fight against whatever we are and and then we also need some relaxation response so this one this one will balance both the systems together right the way you 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 can position your fingers in multiple different ways. You can just pinch it like that, or you can use two fingers like that, or you can use, uh, if you're using the yoga posture, it is like folding all the four fingers and then opening the pinky and opening the ring finger, right? Or if you want to use just one finger, that is fine. So we are going to close one nostril with the thumb Right, that is the right nostril with the thumb, and slowly inhale. Remember the same inhalation that we did, filling the tummy, the ribs, and the chest, upper chest. And close that nostril, open the thumb, right, and release it slowly. So you breathe in through one nostril, close it, open the other side, breathe out. So you breathe in, switch, breathe out. Wherever you are breathing out, breathe in at that side. Switch and breathe out on the other side. Looks like all of, all of them are doing great. Yeah. Any question with the practice? I'll be doing it with you so you can 
look at me if you want to. Or you can just close the eyes and practice. Right? The key is very slow inhalation, very slow exhalation. You may be able to notice that one nostril is nicely open and flowing easily than the other one. Just take a note of which nostril it is because we will be using that information for the next exercise. This exercise is a very good one for activating all the nerve plexus. We call it as nadis. So it is a purifier or the activator of all the nadis. It normalizes blood pressure. It also synchronizes or putting together all the different systems within the body. It increases memory and the coordination between hand and head. Your ability to do tasks without many mistakes. When you breathe out of the right nostril, come to normal breathing. You can open your eyes. So this exercise, there are several studies. If you look into the yoga literature, you will see several recent studies on how these exercises are useful in tasks, right? Improving task, improving attention, uh, improving the memory. So this is how it, is, it has been tested in multiple uh, research studies. So that's, this is a very good uh, study exercise. Maybe you can do that for 10 minutes, up to minimum like five to 10 minutes minimum is really a good timing, right? So before starting any new task, any new job, or starting your day is very, very um, good with these exercises. So um, any questions so far? Yes, sir. 
so if you're comfortable, you can take it off, and then if you have to have it, you, you, ha you can do it with that on. There's nothing wrong with it, right? right. right. So um, the next exercise is a uh, breath holding exercise. It is, it is a little bit, um, if you're comfortable in holding the breath, right? There, there is a ratio, how long to inhale, how long to hold, and how long to exhale. If you're comfortable that holding that long, you can do it. If not, you can just hold until the time that you're comfortable with, right? So it involves, you know which nostril is uh, open, like maybe how many of you have the right open at this time, right? And the left, right, and equal, Anyone having equal breath? Right, that's good. So only well, one nostril is kind of predominant all the time. Now what we are going to do is, because the right nostril is open nicely, or left nostril is, whatever nostril is open, you breathe in through that nostril with two counts, right? You can say any, any mantra, unmask the cure, or anything that you want to say to yourself, I am strong, I am beautiful. Right? Anything that you want to say to yourself, say that twice within your mind, and that is the time for breathing in. Say, I say that twice. Imagine the whole lungs uh, is, is divided into two to you know, two halves. Like the first count, you feel the lower half. Second count, you feel the upper half, right? So you nicely make some sound and fill in as much as possible. Don't overexert, right? But filling the lung to the max, right? Then you hold it for eight counts. The same chant going on in your mind, right? And then at the, at the end of eighth count, open the kind of closed nostril. It's not fully open, right? The other nostril. Push all the air out in four counts. Right. And that is how it works. So after you exhale, after you breathe out, come back to the same open nostril, breathe in, hold, breathe out. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. This exercise, we conducted a research study. So that's, that's where we found out that people who practice this exercise produced more saliva there was more moisture in your uh, eyes too, and the whole um, you know, mucosal area is nicely moisturized. And you also produce more nerve growth factor, more immune response factors, and there's more tumor suppressors are the, the factors that will suppress the formation of tumor cells that is produced in large quantity. And we also produce factors or, or reduce the inflammatory cytokines that, that are the mediators of stress or mediators of inflammation. So we reduce those as well. So when look for the stimulation. Even whenever you started getting that stimulation of saliva, that is the time you think that the exercise has started working, right? So two counts for inhalation, eight counts for holding, and four counts for breathing out, right? Any question? What? Let me show one round, right? For me, the right nostril is more open right now. So I'm gonna breathe in, hold, and breathe out through the left nostril. Breathe in through right and breathe out through the left, right? Right? With the three breath, with the three counts, I push all the air out. The fourth one is like completely emptying out. Then only when you empty out completely, you will be able to breathe in nicely. Right? Only when you breathe in fully, you will be able to hold nicely. Right? So what this exercise does is that it builds the carbon dioxide level slightly, which is good for us. The carbon dioxide increasing slightly, the carbon dioxide will open up the arteries, open up the bronchioles very nicely. The, the nice, your ability to dilate is 
very, very improved. So now the hypercapnia is one of the treatments for the asthma and other, other lung-related conditions. So this will be really helpful. It is not something to be fearful of, oh, I'm increasing carbon dioxide. It, is that going to be really bad for me? No. It is very helpful and it is also giving you slight stress to the system. It is a positive stress. That stress is when you hold the breath. It is a positive stress that helps to boost your survival ability for all the cells. The cells will produce survival factors that will help us to fight much better, right? Can we try the exercise? Right. Any questions? Good, let's try it. So if the breath holding is not very comfortable, you can hold it and as long as you're, you're comfortable, maybe two counts, four counts, whatever is comfortable, that much holding is enough. Right? Can we try that for a few more minutes? When you finish your cycle, you can come to normal breathing. When uh, Andrew was talking about, um, he, he talked about the positive mental attitude, right? So this one, uh, we collected uh, information from people uh, who are practicing this, especially from uh, cancer patients and caregivers, and these are attending the Hope Lodge. There is a Hope Lodge in our um, in Charleston. Uh, that is for people who are coming away, like a uh, 40 miles away from uh, for for the treatment. They come and stay there in Hope Lodge. So we collected. Um, questionnaires or responses to questionnaire, what this exercise is doing for them. So they said it, it improves their mood, reduces anx anxiety, depression, the pain that they go through, that is also reduced. A lot of people reported um, improvement in breathing and then overall improvement in mood, salivation. They, the more you practice, you will stimulate more salivation. So this is these are all some of the very key benefits with these exercises. So anywhere from five minutes 
to 20 minutes is really, really um, good to do these exercises. And you can choose, we have like a four different exercises in the paper. You can do either just one of them for all 20 minutes, or you can just do all of them at a given, at the specified times. But this exercise, the breath holding exercise, is one of the key ones from the ancient um, yoga texts, right? It's about easily 2,000 year old poem, set of poems of uh, 3,000 poems there. So I took this information from one of the sutras or the poems from that book. So it's very interesting how we could get something from the ancient texts and test it today with scientific tools and use it for people. That is the power of, uh, of some of these methods, right? So any questions about this? Very good. So you may be wondering like how the um, salivary principles are going to be helpful, right? So it is, it is there in the spit, but we know that some, sometimes we use people, um, we see people using nitro tablets just under the tongue, right? It goes directly, sublingual absorption, it goes directly to all the, all the parts of the body. And in the, from the oral cavity, it goes, the nerves can easily straight away take it to the brain. It can get transported to the brain through the neurons. So there are mechanisms for that. So it is very useful to produce something in our own body with just changing the breathing. The nerve growth factor I was talking about, it, was, um, it is one of the therapeutic options for Alzheimer's disease. Neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, they have reduced amount of nerve growth factor. So now they are providing nerve growth factor from externally. Now here is a technique, you can, ch you can produce your own factors. It's not only that, we just happen to measure it. There are so many other components that we cannot measure yet, right? That are produced in the body. So this is all like a, how the musculoskeletal changes or the contraction or how you flex the muscles, how that works. So it is in the same way that we are using the breathing to activate those neurons or the nerves, right? Um, now let's go to the next exercise that is one of the very calming, um, very cooling exercises, good for relaxation. It is good for sound sleep, right? If you can, you can do this lying in the bed or any time during the day, right? It is good for relaxation and it is not necessarily that it is going to put you to sleep, but it is good for good exercise to do before going to bed. And it also can reduce um, the snoring. A lot of uh, exercises, there is a huge coordination you see when we are swallowing the food, right? So this is going to help with the swallowing, problems in swallowing also, right? It increases the coordination of all the muscle groups that are working in the throat, right? This is called the ocean sound breathing. It is going to sound like just like you are um, in the beaches of South Carolina or anywhere. Uh, uh, you use a seashell, put it in your ears. That's how it is going to sound. It is a feedback to our brain about how we are breathing. So it's going to sound like this. or the Darth Vader's breath, right? Uh, the way we um, produce this sound is very simple, just like you fog a mirror, right? And breathe in and out in the same style, with a closed mouth though. Want to try it? So it doesn't have to be really loud. I just made it so you can hear it. But you can be, it, the exercise can be as slow as possible, as feeble as possible, only you can hear it or I can hear when, you, when I come very close to you, right? So the slow breathing in and out, making the sound. So basically the, the back of the throat, the muscles, epiglottis is just nicely open. When you constrict that, when you, that's how the slit, it is going through, the air is passing through the small slit and makes this sound, right? Let me try that.
This is also a great uh, meditative exercise. You can get into meditation using this exercise. It's a very good one for relaxation, for focusing, and also for you know, controlling the mind or taking care of relieving the stress of the mind. So when the, when most of the time when you're focusing your attention, you're focusing or bringing your awareness with the breathing, the mind doesn't have any other place to wander about and worry about. So that is the power of the breathing exercises. We, it is a great tool for mind control also. So on one side, it can control the mind. On the other side, by producing these factors, it can control the body or it can promote the well-being of the body and the mind. That's why the breathing is, uh, is considered as a, as a bridge between mind and body. There's always this saying that the mind is a, is a monkey. It's a, we cannot control it very easily. And it's a, not a normal monkey, it's a s drunken monkey. You know, it's st stung by scorpion. So it is uh, very powerful in that way, right? So it is, uh, if, you, if you put that mind onto breathing, it is very, very easy to control it. So because we can control the breathing, the mind is traveling on a horse, that horse is the breathing. So the uh, mind is the one, um, mind cannot move on its own. So it uses the horse, the breathing. The br breathing carries the mind away all around. So when you, when you hold the horse, the mind, you know, calms down. So it is a great way. Mind is kind of half responsible for all the pain, right? The half, maybe the physical. The half, if you can get rid of the half with that breathing, it is a great way to control those things, right? We also teach these exercises for veterans with uh, PTSD. And in PTSD, we have pain is, a, is one of the comorbid conditions. So pain also can be reduced. Either it is because of direct effect on the mind or because of the factors that we produce. There are some pain-related biomarkers that we found are, that are going down. So this is also, again, very useful and very useful in reducing or weaning of uh, medications, opiates, and you can reduce the blood pressure medication, the pain medications again, right? These are all are the, are the inhalers, in his steroids, you can reduce the amount of those medications with these practices. It may look very, very simple, easy to do, but the main thing is the constant practice, right? Every single day, every single morning, every once in a few hours, some breathing exercise or just looking at the way we breathe. Am I breathing normal at this point? Like when, I, when we are walking, we know. Just to take a look at the breathing process and then do some of these exercises, humming or the ocean sound or anything that you want to use at that point, just use it, you will see a whole new change, right? That is, few minutes of exercises will change the way how we feel. It's very powerful, right? And the one more exercise, we have a little more time, so I, I thought, any questions so far? Good. Um, one more exercise, it's again a very good cooling ex experience and it is also stimulates, uh, we, we have like three pairs of major salivary glands and like 600 minor ones throughout the oral cavity, in the inside of the cheeks, on the tongue, and the tongue also produces saliva. So what we are going to do is we are going to do um, these exercises to stimulate the air, the passage of air through the tongue or through the teeth it is going to stimulate some salivation or more moisture, right? So the way some of us may not be able to roll the tongue like this. If you're not able to roll the tongue, you could also use the straw, a piece of straw to do that. So what, we, what happens is like when we breathe in through that, the upper palate, right, nicely gets the cool air and the back of the throat also getting a cool air that stimulates salivation, or the secretion of those, stimulation of those minor salivary glands in those areas. And as you breathe out, we breathe out through the nostril, right? Breathe in through the tongue, and then breathe out through the nostril. Let's try that.
Nice long inhalation and then breathing out through the nostrils. And watch how the breathing is nice and cool when it goes inside. See how the tongue gets moisturized. Okay. After the next exhalation, you can come to normal breathing. And uh, uh, yes, got it. And uh, the uh, the other variation of this exercise is the smiling breath, right? If you could just smile and then breathe in through the mouth again, and the air goes through all the little gaps in the teeth, and then the inside of the cheek, you will feel the nice cool air. There are several glands inside the cheek that also activates this this salivation very nicely so try that very slow deep inhalation through the smile and exhalation through the nose After the next exhalation, you can come to normal breathing. Right. Any questions? So this is the power of breathing, right? A lot of exercise is very um, simple to practice. You can take it with you wherever you're going. Um, it's, um, it doesn't require any specialized space or you don't need a yoga mat or specific apparels at this point. I also have a lot of um, chair yoga poses at the, at the bottom. Uh, Kathy have talked to you about this previously. Uh, so there are so many ways that you can use these practices in your um, daily life. And I can be reached, there is uh, contact information on top if you have any specific question. I also do some of the breathing classes through Skype. So if you want to reach out to me, we can um, discuss. And also, um, there is a website, pranascience.com. I have video of these exercises in my website. You can look into that, right? Thank you so much for coming to the class. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.